ان الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله واشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اولئك قوم عجلت لهم طيباتهم في حياتهم الدنيا Those are people that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala advanced their goodness in this life. Meaning, they have nothing in the hereafter. مَنْ كَانَ يُرِيدُ الْعَاجِلَةَ عَجَّلْنَا لَهُ فِيهَا مَا نَشَاءُ لِمَنْ نُرِيدُ Anyone who wants this life, the glamour of this life, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will advance to you what already has been prescribed for you. ثُمَّ جَعَلْنَا لَهُ جَهَنَّ Then his end is hellfire. Because anyone attaches himself or herself to this life and forgetting the hereafter, then the end is hellfire. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu spent some time in pain seeing the life of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam not seeing food being cooked for two or three months seeing the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wearing average clothes riding average animal having below average home not much I won't say luxury, not much of basic necessity. He looks around in his house, he sees some leather hanging old pieces, a jar of water, a pot that has nothing in it, on the shelf some barley, that Aisha radiallahu anha crushes and makes some flour and bread. So he sees all of this and all of a sudden he needed something from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He's seeing all of this throughout the time. Then one time he has a need. Dakhala Umar radiallahu an ala nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam فوجده مستلقيا على حصير ليس بينه وبينه شيء. He entered at the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم and he found him laying on straw mattress. There is nothing between him and the straw mattress, meaning uh, no fabric, no blanket, nothing, just directly on the straw. With all the things envisioned in his mind about how Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam living and how is he sleeping now and while he is thinking about all of this the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam gets up and he looks and he sees the straw is taking the shape in his body in his skin فَنَظَرَ إِلَى النَّبِي صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ وَإِذَا بأثر الحصير على ظهره صلى الله عليه وسلم فبكى عمر that moved him too much and he cried so Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم asked him, told him ما يبكيك يا عمر why are you crying فقال عمر رضي الله عنه قال يا رسول الله كسرى وقيصر هم على ما هم فيه وأنت رسول الله يعني هؤلاء كفار منعمين في أسرة من حرير قصور مراكب خدم وهم كفار وأنت رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم تستحق أكثر من كلها أنت الأولى بكل هذا And he basically said, these are disbelievers and they have all forms of luxury. 
the way they sleep and the way they sit and the homes that they are in and the rights that they have and the servants and everything. I mean, you deserve all of that. You are the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He didn't explain all of this, but it's sufficient. It is in there. هُمْ عَلَى مَا هُمْ عَلَيْهِ وَأَنْتَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهِ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمُ The Prophet ﷺ knows what Faisal, uh, the kings of Persia and the emperors of the Romans are. He knows what they have. So the Prophet ﷺ said, يَا بْنَ الْخَطَّابِ أُولَٰئِكَ قَوْمٌ عُجِّلَتْ لَهُمْ طَيِّبَاتِهِمْ فِي حَيَاتِهِمْ الْجُنَّةِ وفي رواية أما ترضى يا ابن الخطاب أن لهم الدنيا ولنا الآخرة أو عمر Aren't you pleased or isn't it enough for you that they take this dunya which is nothing in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we take the hereafter that takes faith that takes faith that's why we need to build our faith to really envision and picture as much as we can of what heaven is all about so we can work for it and we strive for it and sacrifice for it and believe in it when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about this life he talks about this life nothing it's nothing. It's like hay crushed and wind blew it away. It's weightless. It is benefitless. It's not even equivalent to a wing of a mosquito. And yet you find people fighting over it and attaching themselves to it, over it and forgetting everything. You know, just like if you look around here at Isha prayer, for instance. Who cannot come to Isha prayer? Who? Yeah, I mean, it's impossible to tell me someone living here in America cannot come and attend the Isha prayer. You go to work eight hours. Between going and coming, an average 10 hours. You spend 10 hours working. When it comes to half an hour for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, dedicated, planned, <coughs> convicted, يعني, you have conviction uh, in it that you're coming and you will be coming and you you cancel your plans, you arrange your life to come for half an hour. I was talking to a brother the other day, he said, I thought about it. I work 10 hours and I complain about 15 to 30 minutes, one day I can and one day I can't. So I took a pledge on myself that Fajr and Isha, I have to go. Just like I have to go to work, I have. That's the least you can do. So it is obvious that we are really spending too much time for this dunya and very little for the hereafter. We're not saying come five times a day. We're saying once, at least once a day. You mm -hmm. come pray Isha and you listen to a khatira that really gives you rest really gives you rest when people tell me oh i'm tired at work wallahi you come to the masjid to take a break it's not a chore the salah is not uh, hard work it is a source of rest you come to the masjid you feel good and you go home relaxed it calms you down it brings you down this is like your your spirit is so low because it's attached to this low life and you come to the message it lift your your spirit high you're ready to go back to work tomorrow and so forth so in our reality brothers and sisters we need to work really hard against ourselves to really value the hereafter and not give up the hereafter for this dunya the prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam lived this kind of life and he was given the choice given the choice by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala abdan malikan am abdan nabiyya shukkar rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam abdan nabiyya 
He was given the choice. You want to be a slave and a king or a slave and a prophet? He said a slave and a prophet. He doesn't want to be a king. He doesn't want this dunya. He doesn't want anything that those kings have. So he understood what dunya is all about and he understood what the hereafter. He saw the heaven and he saw the hell and naturally Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said وَالْآخِرَةُ خَيْرٌ وَأَبْقَى It is better and it is everlasting. Yes, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala أَنْ يَجْعَلَنَا وَإِيَّاكُمْ مِنْ أَهْلِ الْآخِرَةِ جزاكم الله خيرا سبحانك اللهم وبحمدك اشهد ان لا اله الا انت استغفرك واتوب اليك السلام عليكم